What's going on, Grace family? Welcome to my YouTube channel, God Good Grace Ministry, the night edition. <laughs> yeah, I'm recording a couple of video videos at night, so they'll be ready to go. So I gotta be real quiet because people work here at night <laughs> on the prayer line, so I can't talk loud. But we are still continuing to talk about prosperity and we on 50 days of prosperity and we on day 29 and I want to talk about what will it take to prosper in these times it's going to take aggressive faith aggressive faith somebody told me I got I got a, a aggressive faith or I got uh what is I forgot what he said um Strong faith. Somebody, somebody said, and I was like, I just exercise. I just believe. I just believe. I don't know what you want to call it. I don't know if you want to call it aggressive faith, outrageous faith. I just believe the word of God. I believe it. I believe it that when a woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus and he said it was according to thy faith is why this happened to you. That your healing came because you believed on it. You believed and you went after it. You pressed through the crowd, calling on your knees. You, you did what you had to do. You had whatever you want to call it, aggressive faith. You came and you touched and you got your healing. You got what you wanted from me by being aggressive, by, by having a purpose. What was your purpose? What do you want from me? God asked him, man, what can I do for you? I want to see. I want to be healed. If you would do it, Lord, Lord said, I will. So that's how he is with us. But we have to have aggressive faith. We can't have passive faith. My daughter told me that she want to believe, but she don't want to look foolish. She don't want to be embarrassed if, if, if it doesn't happen. I said, look, our faith will have us on the ledge jumping all by ourselves. There ain't no other way to be but have the faith of God. There's no other way. We, we, we already far left as it is. I'd rather look foolish and keep believing than not believe and, and have the world uh, accept me. No. Believe what the word of God said over everything else. Everything else. And if it doesn't seem to be working, then evaluate yourself. After we did an evaluation, we found out the reason why thing happened because she blamed God. And deep down, she's thinking, hey, if it happens, then I forgive you, God. But if it don't happen, then you are exactly who I thought you was. A person that don't care much about me, but you care about other people. How can you receive from that? How can you even trust a word from a person that you're not even trusting where the word comes from? If you don't trust who sent the word, which is God said he sent the word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction, Psalm 107.20, he said that. But if you don't believe in him who sent the word, how are you going to believe the word that has been sent? Amen? You know what I'm saying? So let's, let's start concentrating, putting all our love and affection, and getting to know the one that sent the word. Who is the word carnated in flesh? You know what I'm saying? The word it was and it still is Jesus. Amen? I told my wife, the word of God is the thoughts and the mind and the emotion and the intent of who Christ is, was, and what, 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 what he wants done on the earth. So let's get into it. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 15 through 68 talks about property is an aggressive spirit. Once again, I'm going to survey because it's too much, but you are too supposed to read this. So go to chapter 28 of Deuteronomy and read verses 15 through 68. It is part of the curse of the law. Poverty is a curse. It's not a blessing. It's not a blessing to not have enough to help somebody. My wife was just saying to me, somebody called us to give us some cases of food, right? And she gave it to us before, but we had to pass it on because we don't, we didn't, we, we're not in need of it, but somebody is. So she called us again and asked her, do we want it? I said, look, I don't know who to keep giving it to because I'm not set up for that yet, but we don't need it. I don't need it. It'll go bad here because I can't move it fast enough. Why? Because I don't have no lack in that area. 
I don't have no lack in, in providing food or anything in my house. I have a matter of fact, I have, I have too much. You know what I'm saying? It's too much food. And I, mean, I, I really haven't went like major shopping in like two, three months. You know, because I have an overflow. But if I know somebody that I can pass it on, then I'll, I'll, I'll make that connection. I'll bring it, let it come through me, and I'll pass it to the next person. That's being blessed. That's an overflow. Why did that person get blessed? Because I have enough. My needs are met, and now I got an overflow. Here you go. That's how the blessing works. So uh, uh, poverty is a curse. An example of aggressive poverty in verse 30 of Deuteronomy 28. When we're in Deuteronomy 28, we are surveying this. Survey means we just we just skimming through it. You shall plant a vineyard, and it shall not and, and shall not gather the grapes. Verse 38. You will carry much seed into the field, and shall gather but a little, and for the locusts shall come and consume it. These are all curses. Imagine having a bunch of uh, seed to plant, but yet you only you only harvest a little bit. That's a lot. You didn't get a hundredfold return. Remember we talked about a hundredfold return? Come on. In verse 44, the stranger shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. You know, it feeds on hopelessness and fear. That's poverty. Poverty feeds on fear and hopelessness. Aggressive poverty must be countered with aggressive faith. Come on, amen. We got to, we got to, we got to go at this with faith. You know what I'm saying? Who here tired of being tired? Who here sick and tired of being having lack? Have to always lean on somebody for help. Always looking for you for somebody to help you out because you just don't know how to make ends meet. I'm telling you right now, God spoke blessings over you. It's time for you to look in your house and see what you can put to your hand. What do you have that you can bless the Lord with and start making wealth for yourself? You know what I'm saying? Start being a giver. If you only got $20 to your name, you know what I'm saying? Give 15 away. Keep five. Sow a seed and say, Lord, I'm going to start sowing. And, and forgive me for not being like, like well, do, do what the Bible says. Find out what areas that you need to grow in knowledge and what areas you need to grow in the world of the Lord. And, and ask the Lord to start helping, stop helping you to do this. It's not hard. God is faithful. He wants to help us. Remember Paul wrote, he said that he came to help where your faith was lacking. So when you have your faith lacking, there, there, there are people that can help you not lack in that faith area no more. That we can build each other up, that we can help each other. Come on. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 to 34, this is faith is aggressive force. And faith is just, I can't say this word, but it's P-I-S-T-I-S. -I that's that's the that's the Greek word for faith. And it means an, an aggressive, forward, direct force. Never passive, not, not, not retreating or backwards, or shy. In verses 32 and 34 of Hebrews chapter 11, the aggressive force of faith in action. In action. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 48, David ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. Head on, crazy faith. Faith is determined, persistent, and stubborn. Faith refused to give up and quit. It won't let you go. It will not take take no more. No more. They will not take no for an answer. That's your faith. That means you are believing in what you see with your spiritual eyes more than you see with your natural eyes. Faith got you believing in something that you can't see in the natural, but you see it in the spirit. And because you see it so strongly and believe it so strongly in the spirit, it said that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It will bring substance to what you see in the spirit. And it will bring it to reality. That's the word of God. I don't care if you don't know how it works. I don't know how it works. But that's the word of God. So I don't doubt it. I'm just going to believe. I'm just going to build off of that. But people say, how does it work? And why everybody ain't healed? And why, hey, I don't know why everybody ain't saved. God died for the whole, the whole human race. Why everybody ain't accepted it? 
It just that, that people choose. They choose not to. They choose. You can choose not to do this, or you just don't know what you have. Come on. Mark chapter 11, verses 22 to 24. Phrase aggressively takes what, belo what belongs to it. Remember, whatever grace has provided, faith can have it. And man, you can have it in abundance. You can have it aggressively. Verse 24, believe that, that you receive them. Take with much forth. Seize with a grip that cannot be shaken off. What God has so wonderfully provided through his grace. Remember I said it, we may lay hold and possess and take it with our what? Faith. They say the same thing. Whatever grace has provided, you can take hold, you can aggressively have it by faith. And remember, and all this starts back with what? Your heart. As long as you got the pure heart and you're not trying to get all this to receive on your lust so you can get a bigger house and a bigger pocketbook and a bigger bank. You know what I'm saying? That's not how it's going to work. You, you need to have it where the blessing comes through you and some will stick to you as it flows through you. Come on. You know, Joshua in chapter 8 verse 3, how long are you to slack to go to possess the land which God your Lord God of your Father has given you. He said, how long is it going to take for you to go do what you got to do? Man, go over there and get that land that God. Go over there and conquer that land. Why are you sitting back here chilling and stuff like that? Don't you know that the grace of God had already given you that land? You know what I'm Why are you sitting here chilling, eating TV dinners? Go get that land. Because we got out. We doing what we're supposed to do over here. Go get your land. Go get, go get what God has for you. Grace family, go get what God has for you. Why are you sitting back chilling? Wish I could have that you had done this and done that. Man, go get, go look in the word of God and see what God has provided for you. And then go get it. How long are you going to sit around on your hands and put and put off taking possession of the land that God gave you? How long are you going to just sit there and wait? How long are you going to let the days and nights go by? He giving it to you, but it ain't, it's not gonna happen over automatically. He blessed you. It ain't gonna happen automatically. He laid these foundations for you, but it ain't gonna happen automatically. You must cooperate with the blessing. Amen. Possession in the Hebrew to take, to claim a territory by attacking it, seizing it, driving out the inhabitants of the pot and occupying it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I talk about the thorns in the side. When Paul said he had a thorn in the side, he was talking about people because in Numbers chapter, uh, I think it's chapter uh, 33, verse 55, it talks about drawing, drawing out the inhabitants of the land. And, and, and making sure, and, and if not, there'll be thorns and pricks in your eyes and thorns in your arm and your side. Let me see if I got that scripture right. Because it's been a long time since I read it. Dang, thank you, Lord. The Lord dropped it in my spirit. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which you let remain like anything of them shall be pricks in your eye. Pricks mean an irritation. That they're being in numbers that everywhere you look, there they are. You know what I'm saying? And and, and thorns in your side. Thorns in your side mean they, they, they would just they would just they'd be problematic. And then it said, and they shall vex you in the land wherein you dwell. And vex means just trouble you. They will trouble you. They use that that scripture, that, that reference more than once in the Old Testament about thorn in the side. You know what I'm saying? So let's get that correct. <laughs> Aggressive faith makes a demand on God's word. And take hold on the desire, the desire results. The spirit of poverty, get out of my way. Hey, I curse the spirit of poverty around here. I don't want it. I don't need it. I, I used to live in the in my truck. Me and my wife, when we lived in, in in New York, you know what I'm saying. We had family members that wasn't cool with us. You know what I'm saying. So we had to sleep in my. I had to sleep in my truck. I had to sleep in my truck. Then, and then I had another family member that I had to sleep on the floor in the living room and I and I had to be to work like 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 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 in the morning, and they would they'd be throwing parties and gatherings and stuff. I had to literally sleep in my truck during the day. In the cold in New York. I know what it's like to be like that. Moving about, you know, having bad I know I don't I don't have them things no more by the grace of God. 
because I learned to put principles. I do the right thing now, and I'm being a good steward. And however God is leading me, that's the way I want to go. And I, don't, I don't never want to look back. I will, I will either go past you, and I'm going to go right through you. Either way, I'm going to aggressively take the prosperity that is rightfully belongs to me in Christ Jesus. And you can do the same thing. What is yours by grace? You can have it by faith, but you got to get aggressive with it. You got the, the, they said the violent season is by force. That, that means you got to get violent against the devil. And you got to say, I am tired. I'm sick and tired of you. I ain't taking it no more. Probably get up out my house. I'm getting ready to change everything. I'm changing the locks. You ain't coming back up again. I'm changing my mindset. I am rich. Wealth and riches shall be in my house. The Lord takes pride in the prosperity of his people. Come on. Get, rid, get, get a righteous anger. Be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. That means don't let the sun settle on the devil. Stay angry. Stay stirred up. Stay stirred up against injustice. Stay stirred up against poverty. Don't never let the sun go down. Stay, stay stirred up against sickness and, and, and sin and, and everything. Don't let your anger go down. Don't never let the sun go down on it. Let it stay stirred up against the injustice and, 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 and poverty. And get aggressive with your faith. Step out on the ledge. See where it takes you. Not an actual, actual ledge. We're not going to do that. But I'm talking about on the spiritual land. Step out in faith and see what God is leading you to. Step out of that boat into the water and see how far you can walk. I guarantee you the moment that you start to, to go under, God got you. Because he did it for Peter, he do it for you. The moment you call out, Lord, he got you. He got you. Well, thank you for sticking around. This is another short video. I hope you had a good time. I hope these words have blessed you. I hope they have found a, a good place to live in your heart and, and, and that they start to grow and they start to move you towards the things that God wants you to have. Remember, be aggressive with your faith. Just because you say you don't mean the devil done backed off on you. Remember, we're in a fight for our lives constantly fighting for our lives, fighting for the things that are rightfully out because the devil don't want us to have these truths. He don't want you wealthy because then you'll have money to pour into the kingdom of God. He don't want you healthy because then you'll, you'll be able to go all over the world spreading the, the good news. You know what I'm saying? He don't want you to know who you are. He, he'd rather have you sitting home depressed and lonely and defeated, not knowing that you're a child of the most high God. Come on. Well, I'll see you tomorrow on another 50 days of prosperity. We'll be on day 30. Day 30. And we're going to keep knocking them out. So thank you for joining us on God Good Grace Ministry, and I'll catch you tomorrow.